And on today's show, why should advisors offer captive insurance companies? Part two of this week's series on captive insurance companies with author and expert, Wes Sirk. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Backroom Technician in Innsmark. Let's get down to business. Well, welcome to day two, Wes. Hello. Hello for you, and I'm, if you have not understood anything about captives, I, I really recommend you go back out and watch Monday show first in sequence. It'll give you the kind of foundational groundwork you're gonna be able to do this, and you may be able to frame your practice around this. This is a hot idea. I've seen a lot, and let's just get the bad boy stuff out of the way. There's a lot of guys touting this. Correct. Captive insurance companies. And what I go out to different places where I venue, whether it's insurance forum, producers web, some of the places I write for, I have to say, I, I see stuff out there in captives, and I, even I, who I would never call myself an 831B expert, I see stuff out there and I go, no way. And so advisors look at some of this and they see the same things I see and go, I really don't see, I don't want to bring captives to, to a big business that can actually do this. But really, why is this such a hot idea to add to your practice as an advisor? Advisors should be talking about it with their clients because if they don't, other people are, mm -hmm. because it is such a hot topic. I mean, there's seminars left and right about captive insurance companies, and I would say most of them are wrong mm -hmm. in, in their approach. It's almost a perfect storm in the insurance industry, and we're getting a ton of work right now in the, in the area of captive insurance companies. And one of the reasons is insurance premiums are on the increase. You know, workers' comp, liability insurance, health insurance, all these insurances are, can, are going up and up and up. We were in a period of soft markets and premiums were going down, but they've been going up at astronomical rates. So doing a captive insurance company, you have the ability to get out of those hard and soft market cycles. As an advisor, you can go to your client that have actually better than industry experience and give them an idea so they can actually start making underwriting profit where something was just a pure expense to their business. So if I'm an advisor and I have a pretty good book of business, I have businesses, how would I learn, what's the approach? Is it a tax issue? Is it a savings premium issue? Is it participating in the profitability issue or maybe all of them? What, what, why, what do I need to know and how do I know will this fit my practice? Well. I mean, an easy, I got that question last week, an advisor said, how do I know if the, cap, if the prospect is ideal for a captive? I said, find out how much money they're paying in premiums in the traditional market, health insurance, workers' comp, general liability, and then ask the business owner how much their, the insurance company is paying out in claims. If they're paying out 50% or less in claims, they're a good candidate. If the business owner can remember when the insurance company has paid out more than they pay in premiums, mm -hmm. they're not a good prospect in the first place. Hmm. So they would need to just stay put. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, all right, so let's say I did. I took your rule of thumb, I went out into the business market, not only the ones of the businesses I have as clients, but now I'm looking as this as a recruiting tool. I wanna to go in there and differentiate myself. Not that many people are articulate on this. How much would it take to, how much would it take to ramp up to get to the basics at least to bring this to the table? It doesn't take that much. It's, it's really spending some time and just learning the insurance business. Most of the life insurance and financial advisors, they actually understand the insurance business. They can get to the bottom line very, very quickly to figure out what kind of policies are people buying, what kind of policies are people buying in specific industries. I mean, granted, they're gonna have to invest some time in in understanding the industry that they're going into so they can sound intelligent. But we have conversations with advisors all day long where they call up and I call them the I got a guy conversations. Mm -hmm. I got a guy who's a contractor in this field. What should I be finding out? You know, I have somebody who's mm -hmm. in this industry, entertainment or whatever, and we can say you need to know these are the hot buttons for their industry and then from there they can then go in and, and talk intelligently about and you have that a data industry. collector for all this. Correct. Just that you can walk through it. If I'm a newbie in captives and I'm going to work, walk through my first interview, I want my first contact interview to be doing the Q&A that you guys use and that you walk through every day. Yeah, correct. And we'll have, we have data pieces for developers, contractors, um, crossing guard company. I mean, mm -hmm. you name it. We, we try to get specific mm -hmm. for different industries 
so the advisors can get the information because this you don't the information you get for a roofer isn't the same as a um, cardboard box manufacturer mm -hmm. so it's you know it's very we we like to collect information mm -hmm. that's useful for us and them well, one of the reasons I have Wes on is not only because I'm drinking his Kool-Aid and I believe he has one of the best uh, captive insurance company offerings, but he's a major player. He's a Forum 400 producer as well as a top of the table producer. So when I have a person that actually puts premium on the table in this sector, I want to be pay attention to that. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk about why companies want to self-insure. We've talked, we dabbled a little bit on it, but we want to now unearth and unpack the real psychology behind why a business is going to say, I want to do this. It's, this is really a good idea. We'll be right back from the break. Back in the day, life insurance professionals were called field underwriters. Then, carriers trained their field force in the basics of life insurance underwriting. Today, the insurance industry doesn't educate the agent population as they once did. But now, you can have the informed risk guide at your fingertips so you can illustrate a reasonable rate class for your life insurance prospects. Just request your copy of the Inform Risk Guide at downtobusiness.ashbrokerage.com. It's free from Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. Well, welcome back to our second segment. Of course, we're with Wes Sirk, an expert on captive insurance companies. And I just, as at the break, I told you that not only are they doing, they're having books out, and here's this book he wrote out in 2008 called Taking Captive, and Taking Captive, and then the second book, You Can Make It, But Can You Keep It, which is, I love that mantra. And I, I said he's a top of the table and a Forum 400 producer. They not only have a captive insurance, but he and his other two partners have a huge regular practice too. I mean, I keep thinking, I, I know you because your mantra out on the, uh, on the web is all about captives, but really you guys are monsters on, as an advisor. So this is why I liked our first section because you can actually tell this is what an advisor needs to know. We're doing it, we've already done it. Now, when I'm looking at a company I want to self-insure. I hate the premiums I'm paying. I've been really good at my risk management. I just want to, if I'm going to participate, why can't I profit in that instead of just writing this off as an expense? Talk about why they're so, why they see this as an attraction. A few years ago, we were doing a lot with builders and developers. I'd say over the last three years, 70% of the business owners that come to us are interested in health insurance and workers' comp. And they want to get out of that traditional market. And now, will, they be able to, will they be able to go get out of the traditional health market and still be in compliance with Obamacare? Yeah, and that's the best part. Wow. Is these, these are written in. I mean, when you look at all, I was going to say 2,300 pages, but it's really more like 25,000 pages hmm. of the Affordable Care Act. I mean, what we do in self-insurance with health insurance and using a captive is right in there. It's black and white. So companies can actually, instead of paying, everyone thinks that it's going to, that the Affordable Care Act is going to curb insurance premiums, but mm -hmm. it's not. It's really out of control. And by doing your own captive insurance company and taking on that risk yourself, mm -hmm. then you know you can really get in on the swindle that mm -hmm. you know insurance companies have been getting. I just spoke on the traditional insurance market. It was about health insurance, and the business owners wanted to know how does how do captives work and I said, let's take captives out of this. And I used United Healthcare as an example for how do health insurance companies make money. And I used the 2013 filed returns for United Healthcare. United Healthcare took in $110 billion in premium. They paid out 70.1 billion in medical claims. And last year, the requirement is that an insurance company had to pay out 80% mm -hmm. of their premiums in medical expenses. Take a guess what percentage United Healthcare paid out in medical premiums. It would be more, wouldn't it? Well, they paid out 70.1 billion out of the 110, but yet using the government calculations, they paid out 80.2% of their premiums in medical expenses. Now. There's no conceivable calculus you can do where you take in 110 and you pay out 71 and that's 80.2. So the whole system's messed mm -hmm. up. But a company can create their own captive insurance company, can create, can create their own self-insured trust for medical. They can pay the premiums to their own self-insured medical plan, buy reinsurance from their captive, and then their captive goes and gets reinsurance for itself so you know Mm -hmm. um, where you're drawing the line in the sand as far as your loss. Are some of these concepts you're bringing up now, are they in any one of these two books? Um, no. 
Taken Captive came out in 2008, mm -hmm. and it wasn't approved from the Department of Labor until November 2009. Uh, but there's a ton of information on our website mm -hmm. about the Affordable Care Act. If you want more information, just hop out to a site. Okay, now you're just giving me some information that a that companies are looking at. And of course, everybody wants to mitigate Obamacare. And then when I thought about this, I, you said this yesterday about workman's comp. I mean, that's a big chunk of money. So pe there's, there's ways that people can actually still insulate themselves from the liability, but participate in the underwriting, especially if we have good performance so we didn't have any real claims, we can participate in the profits. So there's a, this is a, these are places, when you say some of the big names you said on Monday, FedEx, I mean, that's you know big, Verizon. Uh, companies are seeing this is a way to, to really mitigate costs and keep some money for the bottom line. If you've seen companies now that are hungry for this, how many times when you go out to businesses, they go, I never heard of this before? Seven times out of 10, eight times out of 10. So even though the bulk of big companies and corporations are doing this, the vast majority of business, 70% of the business don't even know this is out there. Correct. Now, how do, when, you, when you're looking at this, if you had to go out to businesses and say, here's a mantra, what would that be to those people that don't know anything about it? You have the ability to make the underwriting profit that's currently going to the insurance companies. And so you can get that for yourself, that's about, and correct. is that the mantra, that's what they wanna hear? Yeah, correct. Yeah, I mean, we're, we haven't gotten into the tax benefits, mm -hmm. but there's substantial tax benefits. There's a big difference between an insur a captive insurance company and self-insurance. Mm -hmm. With self-insurance, you only get a deduction for the claims that you pay. Mm -hmm. So if you were at a million dollars a year for self-insured comp and you paid out half a million dollars in claims, you only get a deduction for half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Or health insurance, you only get a deduction. But if you have your own captive insurance company, you can now legally take deductions for the amount that you put in reserves. So instead of that same person, that same business that was paying a million dollars and with self-insurance, they only paid out half a million in claims, they can pay the million dollars to their own captive. They can still pay out the half a million in claims, but now they have this legally deductible reserve of half a million dollars hmm. that sits there as an asset of their insurance company and allows them the financial flexibility so if claims come down the road later on then they get those they they can use those assets but if claims never materialize they have the ability to take those money out of their captive at favorable tax treatment well that's all the time we have for today's show remember before moving forward with any of our ideas always consult your tax advisor legal counsel or your broker dealer compliance officer missed an episode just hop out to down to business dot ashbrokerage.com and remember you could be wiser as an Ash Brokerage Advisor. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you tomorrow.